for today's lesson, we will be discussing about logarithms. So, what we will have first is the introduction about logarithms. We will discuss what a logarithm is, how to rewrite exponential functions, or how to rewrite exponential into logarithmic forms, and also how to evaluate logarithms. Let us define first what is logarithm. A logarithm is the power to which a number must be raised in order to get some other number. So in short, in logarithm, we are identifying the exponent in which we will be using this in order to obtain a certain number. So again, for logarithms, we are concerning about the exponents. So the form in logarithm is this one. which is read as logarithm of y base b equals x. Now, there are certain parts for our logarithm. We have b, which is called as the base. We have the x, which is the exponent, and y, which is the argument. If you notice, the parts of logarithm are just the same as with the parts of exponential functions. Because logarithm and exponential functions, they are somehow related with one another. So they just have the same components. The only difference is that uh, the way we write them. The base must be a positive number, not equal to 1. So this is also the same as with the exponential function. So they just follow the same rule for the base. And the argument must be a positive number. So when you say argument, we are referring to the exact number that we're looking for. For example, 2 raised to 4 is equal to 16. Then 16 is our argument. Now, like what I've said, exponential and logarithms are related with one another. So because we can rewrite exponential equations into logarithmic equations and vice versa. So let's say you're given an exponential equation, y equals b raised to x, then its logarithmic form will be this one. Logarithm of y base b equals x. So all you have to do is just to identify where is the base, where is the exponent, and where is the argument. And then you just have to place it correctly in our logarithmic form. Then if the given to you is the exponential form, you just do the other way around. Again, just identify which one is the base, which one is the argument, which one is the exponent. So you just have to remember the placement of the numbers or the terms that we're looking for. Example, um, 2 raised to 5 equals 32. This one is in exponential form. Then its logarithmic form will be logarithm of 32 base 2 equals 5. In this given, this is our base. This is the exponent or x. This is the argument which is y. So as you can see, this one is the base, exponent, and then this one is the argument. So this means we have to raise 2, which is the base, to 5 in order for us to get 32. If the given now is in logarithmic form, let's say we have logarithm of 81 base 3 equals 4. So again, you just have to identify where is b. In this case, the base is 3. The exponent is 4. And the argument that we have is y. And then all you have to do is to write it into this form. So we have 3 raised to 4 equals 81. So, again, that's how you write exponential to logarithm and logarithm to exponential. You just have to identify the base, the exponent, and also the argument, and then just place them properly in the form. We also have what we call as common logarithm. So, the common logarithm is a logarithm with a base of 10. In this case, the base is not written anymore. So, this is a special case for logarithms. Wherein, if the base is 10, so we don't write it anymore. So if you see that there is no number in the subscript of the logarithm, then that means the base is automatically equal to 10. Example, let's say we have here this one. Let's write here logarithm of 1000, then let's write equal to 3. So as you can see, there is no number here in the subscript of logarithm, but that doesn't mean that the base is already equal to 0. This means that the base is equal to 10. So just remember that the, if the base is equal to 10, you don't have to write it here anymore. Automatic, it will be equal to 10. Another case of special logarithm is what we call as the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm is a logarithm with a base of e. 
During our discussion with exponential function, I already presented to you the e, or this is what we call as the natural number. So, if the base now is e, or our natural number, then the logarithm is written as ln. So, it's not log or log anymore, but we will be using ln. If you see this, this means that the base of the logarithm is e, or our natural number. Example, you are given ln of a equals 2. So since the given here now is ln, that means the base now is e. So you still have the argument and you still have the exponent. So we have here now e raised to 2 equals a. So that is what you call natural logarithm. Now let us rewrite the following logarithm in its exponential form and vice versa. Let's start with 2 raised to x equals 10. Now, in a writing, like what I've said, you just have to identify the base, exponent, and the argument. So, in this case, 2 is the base, x is our exponent, and then 10 is the argument, which is y. So, therefore, the logarithmic form of this will be logarithm of, then you write the argument, which is 10, then the base is 2, and equal to x, which is the exponent. So this is now the logarithmic form of this given equation. Another example, let's say we have 10 raised to 2 equals 100. So the base here is 10, the exponent is 2, then the given argument is 100. Now notice that the base here is 10. This means that we will be dealing with common logarithms. So that means what we will do is we will not be writing 10 anymore in the logarithm form. So logarithm of 100 is equal to 2. So again, if the base of our exponent is already 10, no need to write it here in the logarithmic form. If the given now is a logarithmic form, what we will do is just to identify again the base argument and the exponent. So we have here logarithm of 12 base 3 equals x. So this is the base, this is our argument, and then this is our exponent. So to write this into its exponential form, you take the base, write the exponent, and equate it to the argument which is 12. So this is now our answer. Okay, let's say we have here now logarithm of 8 base 2 equals 3. So this is our base, this is the argument, and then this is our exponent. So the base here is 2, so you write 2, exponent is 3, and then equate it to 8. So this is now the exponential form. So this means we have to raise 2 to 3 in order for us to get 8. So this is now the exponential form of the said logarithm. Now let's evaluate the following logarithms. When we are evaluating logarithms, um, that means we are identifying or we want to identify the exponents that we have to use for our base in order for us to achieve or obtain the argument that we have. So just take that in mind. So let's say we have logarithm of 256 base 2. So we have to evaluate this, meaning we have to identify the exponent that we have to use for 2 in order for us to achieve or obtain 256. So we can write this logarithm of 256 base 2, which is equal to x. Now, you can write this into its exponential form. So that means you have 2 raised to x equals 256. Now, in order for us to identify the value of x, we can rewrite 256 into its exponential form wherein the base is also equal to 2, so that the 2 will be equal. So we have 2 raised to x equals, now 256 can be written as 2 raised to 8. Now, since both sides of our equations have the same base, that means we can say that the exponents are also equal. So we can now say x is equal to 8. So that will be now the value of this logarithm. So the value of logarithm of 256 base 2 is equal to 8. So that means we have to raise 2 to 8 in order for us to obtain 256. 
Another example, logarithm of 243 base 3. So this time, we have to identify what exponent should we use to raise to 3 in order for us to get 243. So we can write it again, logarithm of 243 base 3 equals 3 equals x and then write it into its exponential form. So 3 raised to x equals 243. Like what we did with the previous examples, we can rewrite 243 into its exponential form wherein the base is also equal to 3. So 3 raised to 5. Now since the base are the same, that means the exponents are also the same. So let's write x equals 5. Therefore, the value of this logarithm should be equal to 5. So that means we will be raising 3 by 5 in order for us to obtain 243. Another example, logarithm of 100. So let's write here logarithm of 100 equals x. So we have to identify this. Now, since this is logarithm of 100, so you, as you can see, there is no number in the subscript of our logarithm. That means the base of this logarithm is already equal to 10. So if you write it into its exponential function, that will be 10 raised to x equals 100. Now, in what number should we raise 10 in order for us to get 100? So, by just observing, you can easily say that x should be equal to 2. You can also rewrite 100, it will be 10 raised to 2, and then you will get x equals 2 as well. So that means we have to raise 10 by 2 in order for us to get the argument which is 100. Therefore, the value of this logarithm is 2. Now if the given is like this, 3 logarithm of 32 base 2. So as you can see, we have here a number. This means we have to multiply the value of this logarithm by 3. So first is we have to identify the value of logarithm 32 base 2 and then let's multiply it to the coefficient which is 3. Now we have to identify what value should we use as the power of 2 in order for us to get 32. So in order for us to get 32, 2 must be raised to 5. So that will be the value of our logarithm. Because 2 raised to 5 is equal to 32. And then to get the final answer, all you have to do is just multiply 3 and 5. So you will get 15. So this will now be the value of this logarithm. Another example, logarithm of 1 over 16 base 2. So as you can see now, the argument that we have is a fraction. So let's write here logarithm of 1 over 16 base 2 equals x. So we are again identifying the value of x. We can write this 2 raised to x equals 1 over 16. Now we have to identify what will be the value of x or in what number should we raise 2 in order for us to get 1 over 16. Now as you notice, the argument that we have now is a fraction. And it is impossible for us to get a fraction if we raise a certain number by a positive number. Because for example, if you raise this 2 raised to 4, that will be positive 16 only. But our answer or the argument that we have is fraction. So that means our exponent should be negative. Because if the exponent is negative, we will be getting the reciprocal. So what you can do is, we'll write 2 raised to x equals. Then this one, we'll rewrite this as 1 over 2 raised to 4. So I'm still rewriting it, wherein the base is the same as the other one. Now, what we will do next is, we'll get the reciprocal of this. So this will become 2 raised to negative 4. If we get the reciprocal, the sign of the exponent will change. Now, they already have the same base. They are both whole numbers. So what we will do, get the exponent. So x equals negative 4. So this is now the value of x. Or this is now the value of our logarithm. So that means you have to raise 2 to negative 4 in order for us to get 1 over 16. For our last example, let's say we have here logarithm of 1, 8, base 2, plus logarithm of 64, base 2. So as you can see, there are two logarithms, and 
there is an operation which is addition. So this means we have to evaluate first the two logarithms and then what we will do next is that we will add their values in order for us to get the total. So let's evaluate first this one, logarithm of 1, 8, base 2. So we have to think of the number that we will use as the exponent of 2 so that the answer will be equal to 1, 8. So since again, as you can see, uh, the argument that we have is a fraction, that means the exponent must be negative. And since the denominator here is 8, we can only get 8 if we raise 2 by 3. Okay, so that means x should be equal to negative 3. Again, we are using negative number because we have to get the reciprocal. So 2 raised to 3, that is 8, but if we get the negative of that, so it will be a reciprocal. You'll do the same with the other one, 2 raised to x equals 64. So we have to identify what number should we use as the exponent of 2 in order for us to get 64. So it will be equal to 6. So 2 raised to 6 is equal to 64. So that means this is the value of our logarithm. Now that we already have the two values of our logarithm, all we have to do is to add. So we have negative 3 plus 6, so that will give us 3 as the final answer. So the value of this logarithm now will be equal to positive 3. So that's how you will do it if uh, there is an if there are two or more logarithms and there's operation in between. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the logarithms, how to rewrite exponential into logarithms and vice versa, as well as how to evaluate logarithms. And see you next time.